Hello, my name is Natalie Wilson, and with me is Derricka Wilson, and we're both founders of the Black and Missing Foundation. I am Derricka Wilson, and I'm originally born and raised in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I moved here in the Washington, D.C. area in 1999, and I live here with my wonderful husband, who happens to be Natalie's brother, mm -hmm. Arthur Wilson, and we have two lovely children, Darian and Haley. I was born and raised in Trinidad and Tobago, and I came to the United States at the age of nine. Then I moved to Winnipeg, Canada at 10 years old, came back to Washington, D.C. at 15, and I've been here ever since. I am married with four wonderful children, and hello to my husband, Walter Royster. As a mother, of a four-year-old and 11-year-old, it's very important to me to make sure that my children are safe at all times. And when it comes to missing persons, if my children or anything was to happen to my children or any member of my family, I would want someone looking for them. And so I'm very passionate about children. In my role as a, for a former police officer, I used to create programs that was geared to children to make sure that they were safe. So children are our future. We need to make sure they're safe. We need to empower them and inspire them to be great leaders. I am also very passionate about my children and I try to extend my love also for their friends and for other family members. Our children are being abused at an alarming rate and Derricka and I are ensuring that they are protected, that they are empowered to make the right decisions. And as parents, that's our job. Our role is to protect them at all costs. In 2000, I joined Arlington County Sheriff's Department as a deputy sheriff. Two years later, I joined the City of Falls Church Police Department where I became the first and only African-American female police officer. During my stint there on the police force, I created numerous awareness programs geared towards the community to help save our children as well as our seniors. I was also the D.A.R.E. officer and the gang officer teaching about drug abuse resistance education and gang training because it's so important and so vital to educate our children on safety. As a police officer, it was very alarming to me to actually see persons of color going missing and not even getting the attention and recognition that they really needed and so deserved. Oftentimes, when children of color went missing, they were classified as runaways. And we all know that runaways do not receive the Amber Alert. So that was very startling to me. And uh, it made me realize that there's something that needs to be done about that. And my background is in media relations. I have a degree in, well, my master's degree in communications from Trinity College. And how this enhances the organization is awareness is key in finding our missing and media the news outlets they are the gatekeepers to the information that is shared we believe that someone knows something about our missing and sharing this information on the news via social media via our community is very very vital in finding them because of the news media, it enhances our ability to find missing individuals. And it does two things. One, it alerts the public as to who is missing so someone could look for them. And it forces law enforcement to add additional resources to the case. So in 2004, a young lady by the name of Tamika Houston went missing from Spartanburg, South Carolina, which is actually my hometown. 
And I didn't realize the effect that it would have on me knowing that someone went missing literally from my backyard. Months later, Natalie Holloway disappeared and her story was dominating local and national news, yet I watched how Tamika Houston's family struggled to garner local coverage. And so that really, really bothered me deep down inside. As the years passed, I still had that burning desire and passion to do something about it. So in 2008, the birth of Black and Missing came to fruition. In 2008, I talked to my sister-in-law, Natalie, about this issue that was really bothering me, and we started doing some research. At that time, we realized that we possess within ourselves the most critical professions needed in helping these families find their missing loved ones. Me being in law enforcement, Natalie being in public relations, so we channeled our professions to create the Black and Missing Foundation. We found the organization so we can bring about reunions and closure, not just locally, but national, and we're expanding to do it internationally as well. Mm -hmm. When Derricka approached me, there was no way that I can say no. As a mother, as a sister, as a wife, I had to do all that I could to help my community. There was no way that I would see all of these beautiful black and brown children and individuals going missing and not do something about it, not use my training for the betterment of our community. Derricka and I believe this is a call to action. We are women of action, and we're going to do whatever it takes to find our missing. Garnering media attention has been difficult. We have come a long way. We still have a long way to go. I remember the first case that I was working on was Phoenix Colden out of St. Louis, and I called every single station in St. Louis, and no one wanted to pick up the story. So finally, Fox 5 did, and she garnered national attention. So this issue is really important, and what we are encouraging you to do is take a stand with us, because this is too important to let slip through the cracks. It has been swept under the rug for many years. When we started the organization in 2008, 30% of missing persons in the United States were persons of color. That number has since increased to 40%. So the numbers are alarming. Our people are not just falling off the face of the earth. And the key point, the key point in this is reported. So more than 240,000 people were reported missing in 2013, and that's persons of color. So always keep in mind that key word is reported. Since our inception, as Derricka mentioned, last year alone there were more than 240,000 people reported missing. Since our inception, there have been 1.2 million people of color reported missing. How many have you seen on your local television station? Very, very few. So again, that's why our role, what we do, is so important because we have to get these individuals in the forefront. Someone knows something. Please help us bring them home. We cannot do this by ourselves. This was created for our community. And it's very important for everyone to realize that this is not the sole responsibility of law enforcement or the media. It's actually all of us together, law enforcement, the media, and the community. Join us in finding our missing because we have been able to reunite or bring closure to over 130 families across this country. So we ask you to just join in on this mission because it is a call to action. We're not gonna rest until we find all of our missing. And I know that Natalie and I would never see it in our lifetime, but we wanna empower our generations, upcoming generations to continue to push forward in finding missing persons of color. And as Derricka mentioned, we cannot do this alone. We issue alerts many times a day but we need you to share this with your family, with your friends, within your community to help bring our missing home.
50% of all people missing are of color. Last year alone, there were more than 240,000 persons of color reported missing. Did you know that most kids go missing in the spring and summer? Here are some tips as to how you can protect our children. We encourage families to have recent up-to-date photos of your children. In the event that your loved one goes missing, we as law enforcement, the media, and the community, we need to know exactly who we're looking for because time is of the essence. We also encourage you to get uh, take samples of DNA of your of your loved ones and you can simply do that by taking an old toothbrush allowing it to dry out storing it in a Ziploc bag and placing it in the freezer in the event that something happens you have your child's DNA at your fingertip it's very important for you to understand and study research the laws in your respective jurisdiction there is a myth out there that when your children are missing, you must wait 24 hours before reporting it to law enforcement. That is false. If your child is under the age of 17 and he or she is missing, you can report it to law enforcement immediately. If your loved one is an adult and they are missing, Understanding the different laws in your respective jurisdiction and state, in D.C. and in Illinois, you can report immediately. However, other states may require you to report 24 hours, but you do not have to wait 48 hours before reporting your loved one missing. Do you know who is living in your community? Sex offenders can be lurking and living amongst you. And we're not saying that they shouldn't be living there, but you have to be mindful where they are in, in regards to proximity to you. Are they living next to your child's school, next to the playground where you worship each day? Please be mindful and check the National Sex Registry. We also ask individuals with parents who are seniors to please, please, take very good care of them. 65% of our seniors with Alzheimer's are walking away or wandering away. Many of them, sadly, are not found alive. So please keep a chime on your door so when they walk out that door, you know or you hear something. Do you know that most predators are utilizing Facebook and Twitter as a method of recruiting young people and forcing them into human trafficking? We encourage you as parents to be very involved in the activity that your children are doing on Facebook. So what we're going to ask you to do is we're challenging you to create a fictitious account as the opposite sex of your child See if they will befriend you. If they befriend you, start asking them just simple, basic questions on a private chat, of course, and see just how much information that they're giving out because you will be very surprised at how much information your child is giving out online. Mm -hmm. And I know we've shared a lot of information with you. Please go to our website at bamfi.org. That's bamfi.org. Sign up for our alerts. Again, we cannot do what we do without you, without your support. So please come out and check us out. We all have a responsibility to help find our missing. We cannot do it alone. It takes you, it takes our community, it takes law enforcement, the media to help find our missing. Individuals like Pamela Butler has been missing from the District of Columbia for a very long time and her family's desperately searching for her. Do you hold the key? Please help us bring our missing home. As a mother of two very small children, my heart really bleeds when I think of Relisha Rudd who went missing March 1st, 2014, and she still hasn't been found. We have partnered with law enforcement to conduct searches looking for her. From day one, I've always felt that Relisha was not in that park and I still stand by that today. I think this young girl was sold in human trafficking because human trafficking is a multi-billion dollar industry right here on U.S. soil. And half of you don't even know that this problem exists, that things are going on right next door to you. 
So we can't do this by ourselves. We need your help. We need you to help us find us. We're not trying to dishonor any community. We just want to even the playing field because our people are important. Less is more. Less of one particular race and more of everyone else that is missing, greater the chances of a reunion. So we encourage you to join us on our mission and finding our missing.